Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pico Stamos. This is episode 309, season 13. Today's date is February 25th, 2024. Yes, I am back for another show. On today's program, um, I'll do something special today. I'm going to talk about my memories of the Vanish businesses in the Roseland neighborhood of Chicago. And the reason I chose this is because I have lived in this neighborhood from 1969 to 1974. And I'll explain why. And uh, so that's the only thing I will talk about because I have a lot of ground cover. Uh, hopefully not too long. <laughs> you know, once I get going, I just go and go and go and go. So uh, this would be very interesting. And uh, it's sort of bittersweet. Yeah, it really is. And then, uh, so let's get started. Before I do, uh, we're going to go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Marathon Candy Bar. Oh, I miss this candy bar so much. Mm -hmm. And so do a lot of people. So here's a commercial from 1975, excuse me, with Marathon John. You probably remember this commercial because I do very well. Uh, it's a classic. Okay, so sit back and relax, folks, and I'll be right back with the show. Thank you. I am Tweeklaw. <laughs> I do everything fast. Marathon John, you can't eat a marathon candy bar fast, Quick Claude. It lasts a good long time. I show you milk chocolate. Delicious caramel and chewy. Told you. Nobody eats a marathon bar quick. Claude. Marathon lasts a good long time. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Marathon Candy Bar. Features uh, Marathon John and Quick Claude. <laughs> uh, the... The actor who portrays uh, Marathon John is, I think that's Patrick Wayne, son of uh, John Wayne. It's got to be him. I recognize him and his voice. And uh, I used to eat this candy bar all the time when I was a kid. I loved it. Oh, I loved it. You know, the the one thing I didn't like is when it's a hot, sunny day and you had, you know, caramel melts in the wrapper and it gets sticky and gooey and it's like blah and just and then when i was a kid i would just take it up you know take it off the wrapper and just lick the wrapper <laughs> i make a mess and your fingers get all chocolatey like that and then you lick them that was fun you know uh the candy bar let me give you a brief history of this candy bar it was introduced in 1973 by the mars candy company and uh it was about eight inches it had a bright wrapper you know and it's uh, the chocolate bar was braided you know like a pretzel and all that caramel so it's very sweet very sticky and so um then it's ended about uh, 1981 or something like that yeah, after that, so it was on. It was on. It was on the market for about eight years. Yeah, about eight years. So uh, people still miss it to this day. But you know something, they have um, something similar in England called, or maybe from Australia, uh, Curly Whirly. It's kind of like that. I believe it's still. It's created by Cadbury. Which I like Cadbury. I really do. And uh, I never had it. I don't know what it tastes like. No idea. You know, I should have, when I went to London in 1998 uh, for a trip, I was going to look for it. But, you know, I, I didn't think of it at the time. I mean, I wanted to try it. So, um, uh, so it's uh, my bad luck <laughs> that I didn't see it. Uh so uh, I guess it's still around. I, I suppose it is. So, you know, I wanted to come back, you know. Maybe uh, the younger generation can understand what I 
and you know my friends and uh, my classmates uh, endured this wonderful, wonderful, delicious product. <laughs> I was awesome. Okay, at the beginning of the program. I mentioned I'm going to talk about my memories of the vanished businesses in the Roseland neighborhood of Chicago. That's on the south side. Uh, I'm not going to talk about anything else, uh, just that. Or, you know, so let's get started. You know, I got a lot of ground to cover. And uh, first I'll tell you how I came to, came to this neighborhood. And then I'll talk about the businesses that I remembered as a child. Okay. Uh, before my family and I moved to Roseland, we lived in South Shore. Uh, yeah. So uh, my father, he came to America in the, in the 1950s. Uh, he was uh, not married. And then he, uh, about, he came about 1952. He, then he uh, returned to Greece uh, 10 years later and he, you know, and met my mom. And they got married and then they moved to Chicago. Uh, then uh, they came in 1962. I was born a year later and then my two brothers. And we lived in an apartment in South Shore. We lived in two apartments. And then uh, we left the area in 19, like about May of 1969. But when we lived in South Shore, my father bought property on South Michigan Avenue at 111th Street. And it was at Shift Shoes. Uh, the address was 111.35. And uh, there was an apartment there. So um, so in the South Shore neighborhood, it was getting kind of, you know, kind of questionable. It was getting sketchy. You know, it's like that. So we had to move. But my mom insisted um, we buy a house. But uh, well, to make a long story short, uh, short my, my dad said, not yet. You know, we'll live uh, above the apartment, then we'll buy a home. And he said about a year or two. And my mom agreed, but, you know, then it turned into five years. <laughs> so, and so I guess my mom put her foot down and said, no, come on, we gotta, we gotta buy a home. He relented. And then we bought a house. Okay. So um, the reason he, my father chose this neighborhood is because my, his uncle owned a business uh, on Michigan Avenue, like a, a restaurant uh, that was like 110th Street. And uh, so he, he suggested uh, to my dad, you got to buy some property. I think it's a good wise movie did, you know, uh, it was thriving back then. So that, that's my dad made a good investment like that. So uh, in during the summer in 69, we moved and uh, it was a little cramped, not too bad, you know. Um, well, my, uh, there was above the apartment was uh, there was the bedroom, you know, where my parents slept. And then there was a bedroom where me and my middle brother was and my old, younger brother slept on a bed in a dining room. <laughs> so he didn't have his own room. None of us did. Uh, the only time when I had my own bedroom is when we moved out in 1974 in Ashburn, but my brothers still slept together in the same room until they moved out. Um, so Getting back to Roseland, uh, you know, I found that at the time that neighborhood was very interesting, very interesting indeed. And I look out the window and, you know, I see the buses, like the 34 South Michigan Avenue buses. And also the South Suburban Safeway Line buses. Those are the express buses. Uh, I talked about this on a previous podcast episode. Those are the ones that go downtown. But it was an express bus. You would take that. You would go on to Dan Ryan or to uh, South Park, which turned into Martin Luther King Jr. Um, uh, drive. And uh, it was kind of cool like that. And uh, so, you know, what was the best time to look out the window. It was in the living room was Christmas time. Yeah, but everything was decorated and the snow was falling or when it was raining it was it, it was picturesque very beautiful colorful you know it was pretty very pretty i, I love that okay 
So right now, I'm going to talk about the businesses that I remembered on Michigan Avenue. And uh, they were there for a long time. Some have moved, some have closed, and but this is the ones that I remembered. I'm not going to I'm not going to say all of them because they'll take too long, but just ones that I remember. So I somehow I found a list a long time ago, maybe about mm, eight or nine years ago, and it was called the Rosalind the Avenue, and it lists all the businesses like that. So that's kind of cool. All right, so let's get started. Um, I'm just going to talk about the ones, like I said before, the ones I remembered. Uh, the first one was uh, Root Brothers Hardware Store. That was located at uh, 100, 103rd in Michigan. Uh, that business was there forever. It was forever. And they closed about a few years ago. And what I heard, I think they moved to Indiana, probably. I don't know. I don't know if they're still in business, but they were there to the 2000s, you know, and uh, my my father was very handy with tools and he always went there. Yeah, it was a great place. It really was. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, I will talk while I'm looking. Um, there were a lot of bars on that uh, as well. And uh, let's see, there was a Roseland Animal Hospital, which I remember seeing that. Also, there was a, uh, there were a few uh, car dealerships. Like, for example, there was a Roseland Buick Sales, Bob Model Chevrolet, uh, Kaylee Chevrolet, uh, Benedetto Chrysler Plymouth, Harmony Oldsmobile. I remember that. Uh so there were uh church there was a church there uh there was also um uh, cleaners and all that all right so let's get over here okay all right let's see what else okay now we go to uh, let's go to 110th street um it was tony's snack shop i think that's the business my my grand a great uncle owned i remember going there that was there. And there was also the Parkway Theater that was right there on that side. Uh, I don't know when it closed. I, I didn't see it when I moved. Uh, they must have torn it down. It was closed like that. Uh, there was a uh, sweet soda in, uh, called Sweet Victory Sweet and Soda Shop, something like that. Okay. Uh, there was also the State Theater. That theater was huge. It was big. And uh, there was also Nick's um, restaurant. I think that's what it was called. I'll correct myself when I, um, I think, oh, it was called Big Boy's Hamburgers, I think. Well, I'll correct myself anyway. Um, so, and uh, I remember, and but there was also a um, bicycle shop. And I bought my first five-speed bicycle there when I lived there. It was black and had the banana seat and it was beautiful, you know, and it was like a big store, you know. I begged my mom to get a, uh, to get a bicycle. Also, there was a Rosalind Fur Salon. Uh, that eventually moved to South Holland, I believe, and I don't know if it's still in business, but uh, I remember seeing that. I saw the fur coats on display when I was little. Okay. All right, so let's see what else. Um, yeah, so there was the State Theater. Oh, Big Boy Hamburgers was there. Um, there was the Capitol uh, Cigar Store. Now, let's see what we got here. Now, we go to 111th Street. That's right near where I lived. Uh, on the corner, there was a Fannie Mae. Um, kind of my still business. Tom McCann shoe store, Big Ben shoe store. I remember that. Uh, do you remember York Women's Apparel? Yeah, my mom shop there. Just like that. Oh, also Gordon's. It was a Gordon's uh, uh, women's clothes, and uh, they had a, a couple locations uh, on the south side. And my mom bought a few uh, dresses there, and she said they were very pretty, very nice. Also, there was a. A um, let's see, 
uh, jewelry store called Van Simpas, also Kinney Shoes. And on the corner of 112th Street was the Three Sisters clothing store. Ah, everyone remembers this store. They had one downtown. They had one on the south side, on the west side. So they had that. And uh, so that was on across the street from the apartment. So I'm going to do the ones on my side really quickly. Uh, no, actually, it's uh, that is on my side. So this is across the street. So on the corner was a Walgreens. On the corner, 111th in uh, Michigan. It was there for years. And then they had a household fin finance, a Union National Bank. That bank was big. And it also had like the first drive through bank. It really did. Yeah, they had a first uh, drive through And uh, I remember seeing that. You know, my, my dad did business there. Okay. Uh, also, there was a, let's see, there was uh, Nino's Pizza on the southwest corner of 111th Place in Michigan, which is still in business. It's on 100, uh, 111th and Cicero. You know, I've never been there yet. <laughs> no, not not yet. It's been, I've been here so many ways. I have not been to this pizza place. I want to go. I don't know why. I never it's not near my house, so I don't know if it's the same. Uh, no, it is the same. P I don't know if it's the same people that run the business, but it's been there forever. I got to go there one day. Also, there was Beagle's Home Bakery. My memories of that bakery was uh, my mom bought me chocolate eclairs for me and my brothers. And the smell, when you walk in, the smell, it was awesome. It's like, oh, it's beautiful. And the the everything everything sweet on display the cakes the cookies the donuts wonderful like that also there was a rosen style center rosen hardware store benson rickson that there was a men's clothing store they had locations all over chicago also rosen music shop and there was a record store and they had listening booths like in the old days where you take a record and you and you want to sample a record put on your headphones or or do you go into a booth and you just turn it on the record? And if you want to buy this record, uh, go ahead. <laughs> like that. Okay. And let's see what else. Also, um, the caramel corn with a K. That business was around. I, don't, I think it's still business, but in Chicago, but they were in the malls later on. Also, there was a, a large toy store. And it was uh, uh, it was on the corner on 112th Street. On the same block at 112th Street, there was a Sears store um, opened in the 50s. Uh, there was also Robert Hall Close uh, at State Street. Also, uh, there was an A&P. My mom shopped there all the time. Uh, my mom knew a lady that worked there. She went to our church. And let's see what else. Uh, yeah, that's. I think that was it on 112. All right. So let's see what else on 112. Of course, on 112 and State Street was Gately's People Store, the, the department store. Oh. And uh, that was there for almost 100 years. And then they closed. And then it caught, it caught fire a few years ago. And then after that, there's a bakery uh, called... Ness Bakery. It was the the father of belonged to the father of Elliot Ness, you know, from the Untouchables, and it became Ergo Bakery. After that was Kresge's Mailing Shoe Store, uh, Singer Sewing Machines. They sold uh, sewing machines, you know, threads, all kinds of threads and like that. Uh, Learners Women's Clothing. Pe they had uh, People's Gas. Um, Meiji Sporting Goods. Cousins Jewelry. Uh, Buster Brown shoes. I used to buy shoes there. My, my mom bought shoes for us when we went to school. Like that. Okay. Uh, across the street, you know, at 112, there was the big appliance store. It was Block. I bought my Tudor Loop radio there. <laughs> yeah, I talked about that. You know, from Panasonic, you know, the round thing. Also, there was a Flag Brothers shoe store. Uh, Herman's Supply Store, that was there forever, long time, you know, and then they closed like that. There was J.C. Penney, 
on that was on 112th Street, and on the same block as JC Penney was the Saxon store and the Stu de Young hardware store. And that was, uh, I think it was called the Veterans uh, Barbershop. I think it was there, but there was a barbershop at 111th Street east of. Uh, east of Michigan. Oh, and I forgot Chicken Unlimited that was on the corner. Yeah, how did I forget that? On 111th in Michigan. Oh, great chicken place. Like that. And let's see. Uh, there was also a furniture store. There was Woolworths. Uh, let's see what else. There was a pharmacy. Uh, there was a Magnavox store. I think that was a Legion Magnavox. They sold TVs. We bought our TV there. Like that. Uh, also, there was the Rosen Theater. Uh, we also had a dentist's office there uh, for a while that we visited over there. Okay, let's see what else we got. Uh, let me see if I'm running out of time. No, I got time. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Okay, that's it on this side. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that um, I remember there was the firehouse. It's still there on 114th Street or 114th Place. I remember it was kind of cool seeing that. You know, I used to be scared of those when I was little, you know, the fire trucks and all that. But then I got older, it was kind of cool. And I waited, you know, when we were living in an apartment, we hear the fire trucks coming, you know, and, we, and me and my brothers would race out, race to the window and look. That was nice. Like that. Oh, that was fun. Look at that. Um, I think that was Jansen's furniture store there as well. Okay. Um, okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, um, well, I'm going to stop right now, and then I'll talk about some more. Uh, I'm going to play a commercial, and then I'm going to talk about Rosalind Plaza. Oh, before I play the commercial, I forgot one more store that was there. It was Hillman's Finer Pure of Pure Foods. It was a grocery store there. Believe it or not, my mom did not buy uh, go there to shop. You know, it was kind of far and away, but my father did. And remember those multicolored shopping bags i still want to find one post it it's kind of, you know that's like a holy grail of van chicago land i want to get that okay let's see all right so i'm going to stop for a moment and i'm going to play a commercial and right now i'm going to play a commercial from 1959 and it's the prince it's the excuse me it's the introduction of the princess phone from illinois from you know from illinois bell i don't know if it's illinois bell or all the bells <laughs> You know, so this is like the introduction of this wonderful um, invention. <laughs> so sit back and relax. And when I come back, I'll talk about the stores that were in the Roseland Plaza and across the street from there. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Is the Princess Phone an exciting new extension telephone? Hello, I'm Marilyn Vanderburg. Isn't this new Princess phone lovely? It's so small, it fits easily almost anywhere you'd like to put a step-saving extension phone. In your kitchen, for example, the Princess phone saves space where it's most important. It's light, easy to hold or move around. A colorful Princess phone in your living room gives added telephone convenience to all the family. In your bedroom, it fits the smallest place. And if you like, a nightlight glows softly. Lift the receiver and it brightens for easy dialing. The lovely Princess phone comes in five attractive colors, too. It's little, it's lovely, it lights. The new Princess phone. Order yours at your telephone company business office. Or ask your telephone service man. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Princess phone. Uh, those things are pretty and they make, uh, they glow in the dark when you talk, <laughs> you know, when you dial the number, but they're very slim and all that. Uh, I, that was every teenage girl's dream to have this phone in their bedroom, <laughs> in their bedrooms, that is. <laughs> 
Yeah. I still see them on eBay for sale. Yeah. They look nice. You know, and they make that um, nice bell sound. Ding! Like that. Okay. Before I start with Rosen Plaza, on our, which is which was located on 115th in Michigan, I failed to mention two other businesses on Michigan Avenue before, you know, before that. One was uh, the Ranch Steakhouse was there. It opened in 1969 and it stayed there throughout the years. Uh, then they sold it, but they renamed it the Ware Steakhouse, W-A-R-E. It's still there. And they, uh, this couple bought it and they remodeled it. Uh, not outside, but inside it looks gorgeous. And uh, the, the food is outstanding. You know, um, I went once when I was a kid. You know, so uh, I kn the people that owned it previously was a friend of mine's uh, uncle. They, he owned that uh, for many years. You know, he owned that. Second, it's a business that's on Michigan Avenue that's still there. And it's the Old Fashioned Donut Shop. I think that's what it's called. And it's by 113th Street. And it's opened in 1972. And it's still running. And the donuts are awesome. I think we bought a couple before we moved, and uh, the owner's still featured on the news, and he's still working there, and it's great. I I would love to go back and get some. They're fresh, they're hot, they're delicious. Oh, that sounds wonderful. That really does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see what else. Okay. Right now, I'm going to talk about uh, the... Roseland Plaza. Okay. So Roseland Plaza had, um, they had uh, the Coven Drugstore. Uh, my mom shopped there all the time. And they had a pharmacy there. Um, the, also, they had a travel agency, a Wetlands Camera. They had a Sino and Sons Former Well. Remember that? Also, Illinois Bell Telephone. Well, I think you, you buy a phone or you, it's a service you know you pay your bill and like that uh also they had the coffee pot restaurant uh we we dined there many times i i know the family very well they go to our church and uh it was great that was very nice uh in the plaza of course they had a national food store my mom didn't shop there much not really when she was in the area she did like that and uh, so uh, that's still an empty lot there. It still is. But that place was huge, had a lot of parking, and uh, had a cool sign up front. You know, uh, I have it somewhere in my files like that. And let's see what else. Uh, nothing that I'm familiar with. So let's go on the other side of that across the street that is um let's see okay the only thing i remember is the rosen bowl that was a bowling alley and uh when i walked by it uh, with my mom and you know my brothers we hear the bowling pins drop so uh that was kind of nice also there was a store at uh 118th Street in Michigan. It was called the Home Store. And it sold appliances. I don't know if it sold furniture. I don't know. But I never shopped there. My mom never did. And I asked her about it. And she goes, eh, I don't remember this place. You know, but uh, it was kind of cool. It was very nice. Uh, they had all the prod all the uh, items on display in the windows. It's kind of kind of very nice like that. Okay. So, um. To close out this uh, show, uh, I'll tell you why we left and uh, and what Rosen is now. Uh, we left in 1974. Finally, we bought a house. Thank God. And I had my own bedroom. <laughs> and uh, we lived in that house in the Ashburn neighborhood for about over 25 years. Then we moved. And uh, my, my father still went to Rosen during the 70s and 80s and even the early 90s, you know, to maintain the property, yeah, the property that is. And uh, until he couldn't do it anymore because my dad got old and he got sick and he sold it. And uh, then it turned into okay shoes, from shift shoes to okay shoes to 
uh, I don't know what else, Kaplan shoes or something like that. Before shift shoes, it was called uh, some other brand. I, don't, I can't think of it. Yeah, like that. R and something. No, nah, never mind. <laughs> Uh, so we sold it in 1996 and, uh, got a good deal on that. And, uh, the last time I went there, well, I drove down there in the late nineties just to look around and Michigan Avenue has changed dramatically. It's not the same. Uh, there's businesses there, but it's not like in its heyday. Uh, so a lot of some stores have closed. There's vac you know, they're vacant. Some are doing okay. Uh, the Union Bank is gone. They replaced a nice new bank. I think it's Safeway, like that. Uh, so uh, the the shoe sh the store that we lived above the shoe store uh, first it became a cell phone store, then it became a clothing store. I think that's what it is now. And uh, so the apartment's still for rent, <laughs> unless I look. So they can't rent it. You know, I don't know what's going on with that. But we knew a lot of people that lived in the area. We went to church. There was St. Spiridon. It was located on 114th Street and on King Drive. Uh, it was there for many years. Then now it's, re now it's at Palos Heights, Illinois. You know, st I still go there sometimes. I go to the festivals. I know people there. You know, but we knew um, we knew a lot of people. We went to Palmer Park on 111th in Indiana. That was a lot of fun. I'll talk about that another day. Uh, the funniest memory of Rosen was when I went to high Bogan High School and I did my driver's ed test. You know, and I was with a teacher. His name was Mr. Egan, and I believed he lived in this area. And he says, "All right, we'll go into the east side." And go, we are <laughs> okay. He wasn't afraid, and neither was I. So I told Mr. Egan. We drove on Michigan Avenue, and I said, "Mr. Egan, we lived on Michigan Avenue and on and on Hundred Eleventh Street." And he didn't believe me. <laughs> he thought I was lying. I said, no, I'm telling the truth. We lived there. We lived there from 1969 to 1974. He didn't buy it. He still didn't buy it. Oh, that was aggravating. I was frustrated and angry. So when I was, I did okay with the test, you know, driving test. Then I came home and I told my mom and dad, uh, look, my teacher didn't believe us that we lived up above. My mom and dad responded, well, especially with my father, uh, well, he started swearing. <laughs> I can't say it on, on the show. <laughs> In Greek, in Greek, that is. <laughs> My mom uh, called them names and all that. Oh, it was hilarious. Oh, what are you going to do? I guess, you know, uh, when you're in high school, you make up stories. That was not made up. No, no, indeed. No way. That really happened. I did live there. You know, I still miss it. I still miss the neighborhood. I miss going to Geely's People Store, you know, shopping with the donuts, with the donuts on the old-fashioned donut machine, you know, with the escalators and the popcorn machine, the toy store, all that. Uh, it's beautiful. Makes me cry sometimes. It really does. Okay, that's it for this show. So uh, the show is about my memories of the vanished businesses in the Rosen neighborhood of Chicago. I might missed a couple, but that's okay. I think I covered all, almost all of them that I remembered. I really did. All right. So this podcast will be published later on, uh, wherever podcasts are available. Apple, Apple Podcasts, Google, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Breaker, Overcast. Also, be published on my blog, vanishchicagoland.blog. Also, be on my YouTube channel. People still ask me, where do I where do I find your podcast? What's the easiest way to listen to your podcast? Go to YouTube, do a search, type in Van Chicagoland Stories. You will find it. Hit subscribe. You will get the latest. You'll be notified for the latest episode. You'll you can listen to the previous episodes if you wish. They're all there. Also, uh, it'll be shared on my social media accounts, Facebook, X. Uh, let's see. I've got to draw a blank. Yeah, LinkedIn, Reddit. Um, also, uh, Instagram. 
uh, TikTok. It's also on Threads and also on Blue Sky. They'll be all there. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, everything's there. So I had a fun time talking about this, going down memory lane. <laughs> In the second neighborhood I lived in Chicago. First was South Shore, second was Roseland, and third was Ashbury. And then I moved to the suburbs. So uh, we moved a lot. <laughs> you know, it was uh, kind of crazy, but fun. It really was. Okay. So this is Speak Astonish, your host for Van Chicago Land Stories. Thank you for joining me on a beautiful Sunday. It's a little warmer than yesterday. And uh, I probably do another uh, episode Tuesday. We'll see what I'll discuss. I'll think about it. So here's bye bye for me, and here's a little traveling music from Ray Rayner saying bye bye bye. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye bye bye. <laughs>